hello everyone i hope all of you are good so i am back with another tutorial that is going to cover the text rendered api introduced in wwdc 24 so i'm going to give you an example this is how it's going to look like once we develop that example so first we are going to create a simple view that is containing a toggle button as well as some texts inside that we stack so follow all of these steps and create the view along with me So here I'm displaying the canvas so that we'll be able to see that what is the final look of the view that we are creating using this code. So basically, whenever we write a text, the Swift UI libraries uses the default rendering library that how text is being drawn on the screen. But we can customize it and we can use different parts of the text with different renderers to create a unique and live effect with the text. You can check out the example that is shared in WWDC 24 as well. So here, up to this point, our view is almost complete. I'm going to fix some errors and it's done. We are going to add a spacer beneath. So this is going, going to be our look, a toggle button and a text with a certain part of the text that is colored as green, which is name of my channel. So here I'm going to create a struct. And when we are going to add this struct to a text field, it means that that is going to be rendered when we add a specific part of the code inside the text render. So text attribute is going to be the name attribute, the struct that we have extended using text attribute. Next, we are going to create the struct render API. And it is going to basically extend the text renderer. And next, we are going to override the function of draw. So here I'm going to show you that what you can use basically to get the lines as well as the characters inside each string. So when you are going to get the lines, layout, dot, flat map, it is going to give you specific lines inside your text string. So you are going to print the lines and you are going to see that how the output looks like. So these are basically the clips with certain indices. And this is the basically the output. You have seen it has given certain indices to string and certain locations on the screen. Now let's go to the runs, which is basically when you are going to convert each of this line to flat map, it is going to convert it into certain characters of words. This is basically to isolate each of the characters so that we can play around with it using our transitions. So here I'm iterating over the lines and then I'm going to get the line which has name attribute dot self. We are going to get the line which has this struct attached with it, which means that our channel name programming with a purpose will be handled in this part of the if statement. And in the else, rest of all of the text is drawn using simple context or draw. It is going to just draw the simple text that we have passed to it. So we are going to get a co copy of the context so that we'll be able to manipulate it. And then we are going to draw it. So here I am creating a blur filter using graphics context dot filter dot blur. And we are giving it a radius of five if you do not understand blood filter you can check out my video on image blurring also you can check out the apple documentation so next we have added that filter to context and you are going to see on the right hand side in the preview that the text is being blurred which is basically the channel name you can uh, basically increase or decrease the blurring with the value of the radius now next i'm going to create a text transition and i'm going to show you how we can apply different effects to this text using transitions so that the text feels alive. So here I am extending the transition with a struct with the name of text transition. I am going to play around with the content and the body. So follow all of these steps and write this code along with me. First, I have created a duration, which is basically the overall duration of the animation. 
Next, we are going to see that elapsed time is basically the time that has been passed since the start of the animation and then a renderer, which is basically our render API that I have previously created. So next, we are going to pass the transaction. Transaction is being used to pass independent animations to each of the part of your character. So here, I'm going to pass a linear animation to the transaction. And next, we are going to basically pass the render API to the body, which contains our view. So this is how we are going to attach a text renderer. So we need to change our content view code a bit because we need to pass this transition to our text instead of passing the render API because that is already passed to our transition. So now this is the proper code. And when you are going to play it, no animation is being played. This is because we haven't customized the draw function inside the render API. So next we are going to do that. You can comment out or delete the previous function draw. Here I'm going to introduce some of the variables. These variables must be declared in the struct render API outside this function draw. I have accidentally written them inside the function. So I'm going to move them outside this function once I'm done writing them. So we have something like elapsed time, which I have discussed previously, element duration, which means that each of the element uh, requires this much time for the animation, like 0.4. Then a total duration, which means that the overall time of the entire uh, animation and then I have created a spring animation as well. The values that are being used in the variables are basically you can do it with trial and error, which of the values suits and, and requires the um, a certain kind of animation to work. So you have to play around with these values. Next come an animate animatable data, which basically passes the elapsed time the getter and setter. So next I've created the init method for this struct. So that will be able to pass the required values. I've set here the element duration to 0.4. If you want to pass any other value, you can do it using this init method. So now the function draw is going to work here. So here I'm going to write some code and follow all of these steps. And next I'm going to discuss what this code is actually doing. So at this point, you have seen here that I have got the specific case of the name attribute dot self, just like the previous code I have shown you a few minutes back. I have created a delay. This is for the specific case of the programming with a purpose text that I have used inside my entire text string on the screen. So here I'm going to get the index and slice for run dot enumerated so that I can work on the each of the element inside my uh, string. So I have created some time like time offset using the index and an element type using that time offset to basically uh, play the animation sequentially like one element follows the animation of the previous element. And in the else I have just basically printed or drawn the context of that text with a certain unit curve to make it feel like it's animated. So here there is an error in the calling of the renderer. So I have passed here the relevant variables. And when I'm going to play the code, you are going to see that nothing is shown previously. If you do not write the copy dot draw here, the channel name is not going to be displayed inside our first if statement. So from, from this point onwards, you have seen here that the transition is not working at this point. So we have to write some custom transitions here. For that, I'm going to write another custom draw function.
so here i am creating certain variables which are following our unit curve with certain progress values and that progress value depends on our time depending and the element duration and the rest of the constants are being worked out on your own so these are all of the values that i have created in the variables and when i am going to apply to the text i am going to show you how the transition will look like once we apply these values and then you can play around with these values to create a custom transition effect on your text also in the blur radius you have seen here that i have used the typographic bounds dot reg dot height which is going to give you the height of your character so slice here is basically each of your character the dimensions of that character so here i am going to apply the translate by on the y axis for the font text and next i am going to draw that font text i have disabled sub pixel fontization that is going to make the transition smooth and no jittering is going to be observed on the screen so this is how the translation y is being written but it's not being played because we haven't called this custom draw function inside our name attribute struct text so here i'm going to call that customized draw function on each of the slice that we have got from the run dot enumerated function and now you are going to see here that how the text is being appearing and disappearing on the screen in the form of a wave moving up and down because the translation is across the y axis so next i am going to apply some other effects like here i am going to add a filter which is going to be our blur filter it is going to be a, a bit transitioning from uh, like non blurred to blurred because we have used the blur radius variable which is going to get the value from the unit curve next i am going to apply another effect which is basically our q rotation filter with an angle that we have worked inside the variable view degrees so let's see how it's going to look like you are going to see a wave of color being appearing inside the programming with a purpose text and you are also going to observe that no effect is being applied to rest of the string this is because we have only applied the text attribute to our certain part of the string which is name of my channel so here i am going to apply the opacity which is going to basically nullify the effect of the blur here so this is how it's going to look like next i am going to show you how we can move from translation y to translation x and how it's going to work so i am going to modify this line 93 if you want to basically play the animation along x axis so you are going to see that the animation is now being played from left to right so moving back to my previous code next also i am going to show you here how we can apply a rotation filter so we are going to rotate the context by a certain angle which is basically just like hue degrees so you are going to see here that they are appearing from above rotating and then moving back to this position but we can also create a different variable other than hue degrees because it is already controlling the the color transitioning inside this text so i am going to change this constant value to decrease the rotation of the characters when they are appearing on the screen so let's see how it's going to look like so it's it looks a big, bit better but the e is still at the bottom of this string so we need to change this value to a smaller value to move this e align with programming with a purpose string so you can play around with the constant value so i am moving it to 30 and you are going to see here that e has moved a bit up move to 20 a bit better move to 2 and now it's it's much better so you can play around these constants and see what is the 
kind of the effect you want from your text. So this is how it's going to work. You do not necessarily need to apply multiple effects. You can work around with a single effect whenever user hovers over a text or a text appears on the screen. This type of animation is going to bring life into your app. So this is all for this tutorial. I hope you have learned something from it. Do not forget to like and share this video. Subscribe to my channel. A lot of viewers are watching my videos, but they are not subscribing. So please do that. And next, I'm going to move to the further uh, Swift UI and API updates inside the WWDC 24. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching.